Americans are capable of achieving extraordinary things when they have the freedom and opportunity to do so. This is American Potential, and here's your host, Jeff Crank. All right, well, welcome to the show. It's that time of year where people kind of get crazy about basketball uh, around March. And uh, the First Amendment, keep in mind, guarantees freedom of speech. But how many of today's college students feel that they can exercise their First Amendment right while attending a college or a university? I would say not very many. We've all heard these horror stories of free speech and expression being stamped out on college campuses. Now, unfortunately, these stories are all too common at institutions of higher education where the goal should be to be exposed to new thought-provoking ideas and discovery rather than to indoctrination. You know, the Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression, or FIRE, does a yearly ranking of colleges and universities to see how their students feel about being able to express their personal or political views. Now, FIRE surveys ask how comfortable students are about expressing their ideas, their tolerance for liberal and conservative speakers, disruptive conduct, administrative support, and openness. And since uh, we've got this basketball tournament uh, upon us right now, Casey Maddox, who is the vice president of legal and judicial strategy for Americans for Prosperity, has taken FIRE's rankings and turned it into a free speech bracket, if you will, uh, to see which schools made it through as having the best free speech campuses. So let's get into this and uh, see how the colleges and universities did. Casey, thanks for joining me, first of all. Hey, Jeff. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. So you've got you've got quite a perspective on this because I want to let folks know a little bit about you. Um, you've sued about 35 universities and either a, a sued the suit suit had been involved in matters dealing with free speech problems uh, at 22 of the 68 participants in this year's NCAA tournament. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, that's I have a, a long history of uh, as a First Amendment attorney working on uh, issues dealing with with campus free speech. And so we've uh, I've been involved in litigation all over the country against uh, public universities where they would have free speech problems. And yeah, when I pulled up the bracket this year, I went through the bracket. Um, and uh, this is a particular problem when you're a First Amendment attorney. I'm going through the bracket and most normal people are able to enjoy the basketball and uh, and, and think about it in those, uh, <laughs> you know, just with their basketball lens on. But I, I keep looking right. at the bracket and remembering you know, spending a week dealing with uh, a problem at this university or several years fighting this university. And so um, that, that's how this idea came about. What, what if we took this bracket and thought about it in terms of free speech? So let me, let's talk about the, the whole idea of free speech on college campuses first. I, I mean, you would think it would be something, and, and perhaps one day, many years ago, it was something that we all just kind of accepted that, that free speech you know, it, it, it used to be the bastion of free speech on college campuses, it seemed. But that, that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. It seems like different different folks are trying to, I don't know whether it's indoctrination or just an intolerance of other people's political views, but it's a growing problem on campuses across the, the, the country. Let's talk about that first. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, and I don't know if it's a, uh, there, I think a lot of the debate around this is whether or not universities are the cause of our kind of cultural problem around free speech. You know, I think we are, um, you know, we, we have a, a whole culture problem outside the, the university context trying to uh, to rediscover the importance of free speech. Um, or, you know, the, the way I think about it is universities are supposed to be the solution to this problem. Whether or not the universities are actually the driver of our bigger cultural uh, free speech problems. Universities are supposed to be the place where we, as a whole society, learn to to deal with challenging ideas. Where we've got the next generation is learning to uh, to deal with challenging ideas. So, whether they are the the reason for our problem or not, um, they're supposed to be the solution for our cultural um, uh, cultural free speech problems. 
and they're not living up to that right now. And so, um, you know, I think there are a few examples that we can can talk about today that are uh, a little bit of hope. You've got to have those, uh, mm-hmm. you know, who are the people who are doing it better. Um, but I think universities as a whole have got a lot to, of work to do um, to actually serve the purpose they're supposed to serve. Yeah, and it seems like, you know, as parents choose these college and universities that they send their that they send their young kids to, right? It, it seems to me that they're looking for a place where they can go learn how to get critical thinking skills and things like that. And th- of course, when you crush free speech, that's the exact opposite of learning critical thinking skills. You're just kind of parroting what the administration or your professor or, you know, whatever that particular view is on college campus that is prevalent. That's that's not critical thinking skills. So to develop this and and in the interest of the First Amendment and free speech, this is really this is really a challenging problem across America's campuses. Yes, it it really is. You know, when I would speak to um, largely conservative uh, student organizations, so to have hundreds of students that were fired up, passionate, excited about free speech. And I started asking uh, those students, you know, these are current college students at the time. And I would ask them, how many of you thought about your your college's uh, commitment to free speech when you were making a choice about which college you wanted to attend? And I'd have hundreds of students, all of whom were excited about, you know, changing their campus um, on free speech. And nobody thought about, you know, what is the culture at this campus like on free speech before I commit to spend tens of, of or hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, to attend this university. I think that's one of the things that needs to change. I think uh, for students and for parents, um, I'm presently going through this. I have an 18-year-old daughter, and we're looking to send her off to college. Um, I think we need to start thinking about uh, what are the universities where my son or daughter is actually going to be able to be challenged uh, and challenge other with others with their ideas, um, because that uh, is part of what makes a successful college experience, being able to express yourself, to challenge other people, uh, and to, to work through those questions. Now, I have no doubt that Casey Maddox's daughter is going to, her dad is going to look at this. <laughs> I have no doubt that your daughter is going to, is, is going to know where the better colleges are. But that's the whole point of what we're talking about. Uh, uh, the FIRE, which is the Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression, um, is, is compiling the, this list. And this is to empower people as they make this decision, right? About where to send their, their kids. And hopefully the idea is that the free market will work here. And, you know, universities and colleges that crush religion or uh, I'm sorry, religious freedom, certainly, but uh, political expression and free speech as well, as they, uh, as they do that, then the free market will move away from those. That, That will be a negative mark against them. And that, that's kind of the whole idea, but explain who fire is. And, and what their mission is. Sure. Yeah, that's, and that is exactly the, the goal, uh, right? So uh, Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression, FIRE, uh, is an organization that's been around for over 20 years. Um, and FIRE was, uh, you know, at its, at its uh, beginning, was particularly concerned with this problem of free speech on college campuses, seeing, like I do, that, you know, basically the, uh, the, this generation students are going to be uh, are, are soon going to be the people who are our judges and teachers and voters and, and everyone else. And so it was critically important that they understand the value of free speech. FIRE has actually recently expanded its mission, not changed it. It's still obviously very much committed to free speech on campus, but it's rec- recognized that it has to take on these free speech issues more broadly um, in our culture. So they've they've expanded their mission, but I think these free speech rankings are a great example of how um, they haven't moved away from that core mission of uh, ensuring that free speech is protected on college and university campuses. And it is an incredible resource. And this is the first time that anything like this has been available the last few years that FIRE has put it together. And it really makes it pretty easy to get some good data on, um, you know, what are these campuses like that I'm, um, that I or my son and daughter are considering. Yeah. And this is such a great way to fight back against uh, this this crushing of, of, of free expression and free thought is to use the free market to do it right to, to, for people to look at this and say, well, I don't want to go to a place that doesn't respect free speech. I'm going to go to this college or university and to use the power of the free market to do that. It's just such a great idea. Uh, How did fire come up with the rankings for colleges and universities? 
Well, it's an extension of what Fire has been working on for for years. And in the past, they've used um, a uh, they they would review university policy. So some people who are, who are listening may have heard of the green, yellow, red light system that Fire would use. That was basically just based on reviewing university policy. So they had their lawyers look through university free speech policies, and if they were uh, they raised no constitutional questions. They got a green light, um, and sort of that was their their system. Um, but they've recognized that over the years that just having the policies right doesn't quite get you to the place that um, you know you actually have a culture uh, that's respecting uh, free expression and an administrative and the administration being committed to advocating for free expression. And so um, they. Uh, supplemented that then with some additional resources, uh, looking at actual controversies. How did the university handle it when a speaker situation uh, was a problem? Um, and then also polling of students and just asking students directly, uh, do you feel comfortable being able to express yourself uh, on certain topics and, uh, and those kinds of questions? And so that's, that's really how this is, has come about, began with those uh, speech code reviews, but um, has been supplemented with with all these other pieces of data that really give you a full picture. Okay, now you broke this up into a men's the men's basketball tournament, right? And and took the the colleges and universities that are in the the men's basketball tournament and and kind of looked at them and how well do they do on these uh, free speech issues, right? So right. Uh, that bracket's broken up into regions. Talk about what you did here with this. Sure. Yeah, I basically just took the actual NCAA tournament bracket and started okay. working through it and thinking, look, if if uh, you know uh, the the schools were advancing based on the ones who were doing the best at respecting student free speech, um, using the actual bracket, mm-hmm. how would they advance? You know, some people will fill out an NCAA tournament bracket based on um, you know uh, mascots or, or or anything else, right? So I figured we might as well try <laughs> speech, and so right, um, and so that's what I did, and. So you, you kind of work through the bracket, um, and we end up with uh, some surprising results that normally would not be um, in a Final Four. All right. So let's do this. Let's go through that. You've got the South, Midwest, East, and West region. You want to start with the South? Let's start with the South region. Yeah. So the, the South region, um, Alabama is the, the team that's uh, the number one seed in the, the actual NCAA tournament bracket. Uh, but Alabama's not doing great on free speech. And so you have one of, you know, if you're a college basketball fan, um, I'm a Virginia fan, so the only time that a, a 16 seed has beaten a one was uh, my Cavaliers. <laughs> um, but in, in this bracket, uh, Alabama also loses um, because Alabama, uh, first of all, is about number 80, uh, 81, I think, in Fires rankings. But they're also in the middle of a lawsuit right now, uh, you know, uh, the state of Alabama passed a, a really solid campus free speech law, and the University of Alabama is actually trying to undo that law uh, in federal court, uh, or actually in state court. And so, um, you know, basically, not only do they not have a, a great free speech culture, uh, according to FIRE's rankings, but they're actually trying to undo state law that, uh, that has protected free speech. And so Alabama loses uh, early on, um, and then the rest of the bracket, uh, actually, NC State ends up uh, being the the champion out of the South region, North Carolina State has uh, is sort of known for having this uh, free speech tunnel at NC State, uh, where students are encouraged to uh, to come and and paint the inside and paint different messages uh, on the inside there. And um, I've actually uh, have been in litigation against these NC State several years ago, but much to their credit, they have actually uh, turned things around and have produced. Uh, a really solid culture for free speech. I think NC State comes in at number nine overall in FIRES rankings and would win the South region if free speech was actually the factor that we used. Okay, so the South region, uh, North Carolina State, would would be the tops there in that region. How about the Midwest? Let's go to the Midwest. What do you have there? In the, in the Midwest, uh, you likewise end up with a, a team that wouldn't make it out of the, uh, the regular NCAA tournament <laughs> bracket, but Mississippi State. Uh, would be the one that would advance. Mississippi State's actually number four overall um, in fires rankings. Uh, they've, uh, you know, had an impressive commitment, I think, from the administration to uh, protecting free speech uh, at Mississippi State, uh, and so they would uh, would advance on out. Uh, you've got some uh, some teams like Texas. There are actually some uh, some not great free speech uh, schools in the bracket. 
University of Texas is you know one of the better teams in that bracket in the actual basketball, but they're like they're I believe 180 um, in Fires rankings, which is not good. Um, and so there are a number of uh, of you know highly seeded for basketball purposes uh, teams in the Midwest that are not very good uh, when it comes to free speech. Mississippi State ends up uh, moving through and makes the Final Four out of the Midwest. Gotcha. Now, how about Houston? Houston's number one, the number one seed in basketball there, but how are they, or do you know how they are on free speech? Yeah, Houston has had a, a bit of a rocky relationship with free speech. They've uh, been involved in uh, in some cases, or at least one, against uh, the University of Houston, um, but they, they rank, I believe, number 80, uh, 79, I believe, uh, in FIRE's rankings. Wow. Um, and so Auburn actually ends up uh, unseating Houston if we uh, we did this by by free speech because Auburn, who's the the number nine seed in the actual bracket, uh, was number twenty two in uh, in Fires rankings, and so they end up moving past Houston. Uh, but ultimately, uh, Mississippi State wins the bracket. Yeah, but Auburn and Mississippi State would be the two best in that bracket right. uh, for free speech, and then Mississippi State uh, w- wins that bracket. Right. Gotcha. Okay. How about over in the East? Tell us about that. So the, the East is, uh, it's sort of unfair that the teams that are in the East end up being there because you've got some really solid free speech schools uh, coming out of the East, including the uh, uh, the eventual champion. Uh, sorry for the spoiler. Um, <laughs> spoiler alert. But that's right. So uh, basically both Purdue and Kansas State are, uh, are, are toward the top of FIRE's rankings. Uh, hmm. Kansas State is number two and Purdue is number three overall. In fires rankings, and they are the uh, you know two of the the most highly seeded basketball teams uh, mm-hmm. in the East. So, um, so the in the East region, Purdue ends up advancing, uh, makes it uh, makes it on out into uh, the Elite Eight, and then Kansas State comes up uh, out of the the East region on the other side of that bracket. Um, Marquette gets knocked out uh, pretty early. Marquette's highly ranked in terms of basketball, but. Uh, they actually just went to the Wisconsin Supreme Court trying to win the right to uh, fire or sanction a faculty member who had the audacity to stand up for another student's free speech rights. Oh wow! Um, so in terms of uh, in terms of free speech, Marquette is uh, struggling a bit. They lost that that fight, um, and so uh, and were uh, uh, had their their hands slapped by the Wisconsin Supreme Court for uh, for an effort to try to sanction faculty members uh, over their speech. So, uh, but so you end up with Purdue and Kansas State in the Elite Eight uh, in the East Region, and Purdue takes them out and makes the Final Four. Gotcha. Okay, so um, I noticed by the way in the East bracket, Montana State is is listed. Um, do you want to talk about them on free speech? I know. In Montana, there's been uh, the legislature passed a campus free speech bill, but then the Supreme Court of Montana, as I understand it, decided that that the legislature doesn't have authority over that. And it's the Board of Regents that makes right. decisions for that. So so they can't be very good on free speech. Right. No, that's right. So uh, and I've never actually sued Montana State. I did sue the University of Montana once, but not Montana State. But um, but no, in uh, you're right. Uh, AFP uh, worked uh, worked hard to be able to get a, uh, a strong campus free speech bill passed right. in Montana that would have protected broadly protected the free speech rights of students and faculty members on campuses all over Montana. Um, and then the, uh, the universities challenged that law and argued that uh, that the, the state legislature couldn't tell the public universities in the state uh, how to manage. Uh, free speech on their campuses because uh, the Board of Regents essentially was its own separate legislature, uh, separate and apart from the the state legislature. It's a crazy argument Mm -hmm. um, that essentially creates a fourth branch of government in Montana, (laughs) and they bought it, uh, the Montana Supreme Court. So uh, AFP uh, continues to be engaged there trying to address that uh, and protect uh, the, the First Amendment rights of students and faculty in Montana um, but you're right. That's it's not exactly a good sign if you're no. Montana State. So. No, it's not. And just as an aside on that, d- didn't the legislature create the Board of Regents? I would assume. <laughs> Did well, yes. I mean, you know, and and of course, the the legislature certainly um, funds the universities. Yeah, uh, that's that's always the the funny thing with uh, with these arguments. I've seen that argument come up now in in several different states, and it's always funny. The legislature is never. 
uh, want to reject the money from the state legislature when the yeah. state legislature would like to, uh, you know, to appropriate funds. Um, it's just when they when they try to tell them, you know, and you also need to respect people's rights at the same time. That seems like a different. That's right. the part where they where they're upset with them. Sure. Okay. All right. Let's move over to the West. And again, by the way, if people want, if they want to find this bracket that you did, can they find this somewhere on the internet? You can find it on the AFP website. We will have uh, have it up there, and you can also go to uh, to ESPN. Uh, there will be an Americans for Prosperity group. So I, I would encourage you to uh, to fill out a bracket. You don't have to fill yours out based on on free speech if you don't want. Um, you can actually attempt to fill one out based on basketball. Um, <laughs> But there will be an Americans for Prosperity group uh, on ESPN. Just come join us there and, and fill out a bracket, and uh, you'll be able to see this bracket live. We'll see how it how well it does. Maybe this will be the uh, the miracle where uh, uh, the schools that we pick based on free speech actually end up being the uh, the final four. A guy sure. Now, um, and by the way, you can see this. We will put the link to this bracket. We have put the link to this bracket in the podcast itself. So you can, you should be able if you, as you pull it up uh, on whatever podcast app you're on, should be able to click the link and go to this bracket. Um, we've, we've done that. So, uh, okay, let's go to the West. Tell us about the West. So in the West, uh, this is your big upset. Okay. Um, so, uh, uh, Illinois ends up, uh, knocking off Kansas at the top side of the bracket. Uh, Kansas is, uh, is in the 70s in fires rankings. Illinois is number 44. Illinois slides by Kansas and makes it on out to the Elite Eight. On the bottom side of the bracket, though, that's where it gets really interesting um, because UNC Asheville ends up not only winning uh, against UCLA, uh, they're, UNC Asheville is the number 15 seed uh, in the actual tournament, not only knocks off number two seeded UCLA, but makes it all the way out to the final four. Um, and that's largely based off of uh, the UNC system has just had an impressive uh, commitment to free speech uh, as, a, as a university system. Um, that's uh, based on state law. Again, uh, another example of where uh, our activists have been uh, engaged at AFP supporting uh, free speech and, and uh, supporting legislation that protected free speech on campuses uh, in North Carolina. And so that state law has really sort of infused the UNC system altogether. And so UNC Asheville, along with uh, the other campuses in the UNC system, uh, all have really solid uh, free speech policies. And you see a culture at those universities that, according to FIRE's rankings, demonstrates that, uh, that that's translated out to uh, students, you know, relatively speaking, uh, in the context of, of public universities today, uh, but students feeling like they can, can speak freely and that they have support from their administration for that purpose. So UNC Asheville ends up winning uh, the West and makes it to the final four. There you go. Okay. So the, the, the championship finals uh, really would be, uh, it looks like Purdue versus Mississippi state, right? Well, it's, uh, it's Purdue against North Carolina state. And oh, North Carolina state. state. I'm sorry. Yes. That's right. Yeah. right. Okay. And Mississippi state against UNC Asheville. Right. Okay. And then your championship would be Purdue versus uh, the, Mississippi state, right? That's correct. Purdue, Mississippi state for the title. And, uh, and the winner ends up being Purdue and that's, you know, Purdue, like I, I mentioned earlier, Purdue is, is number three in fires rankings overall. Kansas mm-hmm. state is number two, could have gone either way, um, on that choice. Purdue though is, uh, is a school that, uh, has really, um, sort of been the leader in uh, free speech on uh, for uh, public universities. They adopt, they were the, the very first university other than the university of Chicago to adopt what's called the Chicago statement on free speech. Um, and uh, they really, uh, you know, made an institutional commitment before anyone else uh, to respect uh, the first amendment rights of students and faculty members and have, have seen that play out. So Purdue ends up winning if we were uh, giving the NCAA tournament crown to uh, the school that has, uh, has been best for free speech. But that's, um, you know, it, it maybe a, a good reminder for uh, or a good lesson for, for parents and students out there as you're looking at schools to, to think about, um, you know, the, the commitment that these schools have made on free speech because it gives you an idea of, you know, what your four years there are really going to be like. Yeah, and such a, such a great example of it. Thanks for doing this, by the way, Casey. This, is, this has been pretty cool. And again, uh, you can, if you'd like to follow along with Casey's free speech, 
free speech bracket, be sure to click the link in the podcast description and you can, you can click that and it'll take you right to it. Um, let me ask you as far as fire rankings all across the board. Um, this was just looking at the ones that are, that are actually in this basketball tournament, but, but looking across the board, who are the real champions on free speech? Uh, you mentioned Purdue, but, but there's probably some others that are really, really good colleges and universities that parents can look at that fire ranking and say, the, these folks really respect the first amendment. Sure. Yeah. So, you, you know, you get the, uh, uh, the schools that we mentioned, I think the number one actually in fires rankings is the university of Chicago, which famously doesn't do college sports anymore. Right. Um, but the university of Chicago is, is sort of number one, Kansas state and Purdue, uh, and Mississippi state, as I mentioned, are, are right up there. Um, Oklahoma state, uh, is a school that didn't make the NCAA tournament, but they're number five overall mm-hmm. in in fires rankings, and uh, hopefully we'll have a, a solid run in the in the NIT tournament coming up. Um, and then you got some smaller schools too, like Northern Arizona, for example, um, is a is a school that wouldn't you know get a whole lot of national attention, um, but particularly if you're you know if you're looking for a place that's really solid on free speech, um, Northern Arizona uh, comes out really well. And that's really kind of, I think, the value of, of these free speech rankings, too, is, uh, you know, uh, maybe the people aren't making a whole lot of choices between, uh, you know, sort of your, your uh, you know, local state college and the University of Chicago. But even when you're trying to make choices between uh, Alabama and Auburn, for example, right, or, mm-hmm. um, you know, or, or Chicago and, uh, and Princeton, well, there are some big differences in the free speech culture at schools that are, uh, you know, sort of comparable schools. Right, and so, you know, as uh, as people are, are thinking through this process, the more we can uh, encourage schools that, you know, when you have solid free speech policies uh, and when you build a culture that respects free speech, people will respond positively to that. Um, I think that's a that's a hopeful sign. I, I saw recently, um, you know, that uh, uh, Purdue, for example, was actually looking to fires rankings and broadcasting that. Uh, and that's, great. I think that's a great sign of progress. Yeah. Right. If a university is going to see these rankings and say, yes, not only are we highly ranked on those rankings, we're proud of that. And we want to make sure that um, our alumni and our students and, and uh, potential students know about that. That can also give you additional hope that uh, the school is, you know, didn't just sort of stumble into a ranking, but they're trying. Uh, they, they understand the value of that. Um, and so I think that's, you know, uh, how you can see a real culture change. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Now you talked about the best. I also want to talk about the worst. Who are the worst, let's say the worst five or so, uh, on the fire rankings for free speech. Yeah. So I, you know, uh, fire, uh, also releases, uh, a, uh, top or a bottom 10 of the year, um, <laughs> for this year. And that, that's uh, sort of separate and apart from their, um, from their free free speech rankings because it's usually you know very recent uh, things that have happened. But Georgetown University um, mm. is among those. Now Georgetown's a private college, and, and that's one of the challenges with putting rankings together like this is that you can't quite judge them the same because mm-hmm. a, a private college doesn't isn't bound by the First Amendment, obviously. Um, but what they are judge, judged by is the commitments that they've made. Georgetown promises uh, free speech and academic freedom, but uh, but it has. Uh, had a, a pretty rocky relationship with with living up to that. Some of you are probably aware of some of the stuff that Ilya Shapiro, formerly from Cato, uh, went through uh, at uh, at Georgetown um, University of Pennsylvania. Likewise, uh, Columbia. And again, you, you note here you've got several universities toward the bottom of Fire's rankings that are uh, Yale University, Northwestern University. These are really really good academic universities. Yeah. Um. But they're unfortunately places where you you can't expect that you're actually going to be able to engage uh, with ideas as well as some of the universities that may not be, uh, you know, as academically prestigious, um, but that, uh, you know, would actually allow for students to be able to engage with one another uh, more. And frankly, I think that's a big part of education. It's not just what you hear in the classroom. It's uh, the ability to be able to sharpen uh, one another as students. Mm hmm. So, um, you know, one of the things I like about this fire ranking is you're using the power of the First Amendment 
to fight for the First Amendment, right? You're using the power of the press, right, or to get this information out there to parents, the power of free information being out there to combat this and use the free market to 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 give people information and then they can they can choose that. Hopefully colleges and universities will go, you know what, we really need to we really need to get better on that ranking and start watching the the infringements upon free speech that that, that they impose on students. Um with regard to public versus private schools, has there, do you notice a big difference between public and private institutions and their tolerance on, uh, when it comes to free speech? You, we do. Um, you see a, a number of the, the private colleges that tend to be, um, you know, uh, ranked toward the bottom of the listings. I, I mean, I, I would, you know, would give them a grain of salt, right? Uh, there's, there are, um, one of the things I think you have to think about is uh, when you're evaluating a private college uh, is that you can only hold them responsible for, uh, for living up to their promises. Mm-hmm. And so if a private college, for example, tells you that, um, you know, we, we're going to value other things differently than, uh, than pure free speech here, um, then they're, they're telling you up front, and that's good, right? Um, you, you can't expect to have uh, the, the same free speech experience you know, for example, at uh, at Liberty University or uh, another particularly religious university that you would on a public university campus, because they're they're going to have other commitments that they're also going to be emphasizing, and that's fine as long as they you know tell you that up front, right? This is this is uh, you know the the environment that you are are deciding to walk into. Um, it's really a problem in a in a place like Marquette, the example I gave earlier, where they tell faculty members when they're hiring them you get academic freedom, but then a faculty member writes a blog post that defends the students' free speech rights and uh, suddenly finds themselves sanctioned. Um, you know, so you're, you're not punishing them for, uh, you know, for their activities so much as uh, not living up to what they, they you know, promised you themselves. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, so if it were the tournament, the big winner would be Purdue. They'd be the champion. Uh, out of the bracket Uh, but if it were just overall it sounds like some of the best universities uh, the university of chicago kansas state uh you mentioned purdue oklahoma state northern arizona uh some of the worst it sounds like the worst uh, offenders on the free speech front uh georgetown the university of pennsylvania columbia yale northwestern did i get them right yeah, that's 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 basically right. You get that that <laughs> bottom list. Uh, I think uh, of of schools that um, unfortunately are you know toward the the two hundred uh, or so ranking uh, on Fire's list. Fire's also, I, I should say, will be continuing to expand this list over time. And so, if your if your school isn't ranked, um, you know, uh, you can also let them know that and and ask them to to try to include your school uh, or schools that you're interested in. Um, but yeah, hopefully, uh, uh, over time they'll continue to expand this and, and it will be able to serve the purpose of, of giving people a way to incentivize protection for free speech on university campuses. All right. Well, listen, F- fire does a great thing by doing this. And, and, uh, again, thanks to them. Thank you to Casey Maddox, the vice president of legal and judicial strategy for Americans for prosperity. I, I, I mean, I guess I didn't know this, that you had that you had gone in and sued all of these universities. I'm really proud of you. I, I'm, I'm happy to know you and work with you on a daily basis. Knowing that, what a defender of the First Amendment. I appreciate uh, your great work on that, Casey, as well. Well, thank you much. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. That's, uh, so, again, look at those FIRE rankings. You can click on the link in the podcast if you'd like to follow along on the tournament uh, bracket that Casey made and created. If you'd like to get connected with Americans for Prosperity State Chapter, be sure to email me, jeff at AmericanPotential.com. I'll pass that along uh, to the appropriate state chapter, and they'll get in touch with you. American Potential Podcast, you know, we're always working on stories to help keep you inspired and informed. And the best way to stay connected with us is by liking or subscribing to our channel as well as uh, following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And you can also go to AmericanPotential.com. That's our web page. If you know of a great story of someone out there who's breaking government barriers, we'd love to know it. Go to AmericanPotential.com. You can fill out the share your story section on that page and, and we'll get back in touch with you 
about that. So uh, anyway, thanks for listening to American Potential. Thank you for listening to American Potential. You may listen to more stories from Americans working every day to expand freedom and opportunity in their communities by visiting AmericanPotential.com.